This video is on the energy band diagram. And this we're going to use to explain semiconductors. But first, we need to introduce it. And we use energy band diagrams to describe solids. So to start <coughs> the discussion of solids, we need to talk about atoms. Basically, an atom has a nucleus. Uh, as we see here in the middle, and that nucleus has protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which have no charge. And then we have electrons that are orbiting around this nucleus and at various uh, distances. Uh, valence electrons are electrons in the outermost uh, edge of the atom. And these are the ones that are responsible for bonding, and more specifically, what we call covalent bonding. So let me remove markers here. Uh, then uh, electrons, so these valence electrons, if they break free from the atom, uh, they basically become charge carriers. They're available for conduction. Uh, since they can move, they can carry charge. Now, the energy that keeps these electrons in orbit and near their nucleus is called the electron affinity. Uh, you can think of this almost like Earth and, and ourselves. Uh, we are tightly bound to Earth. Uh, and if we overcome certain energy, we can basically fly off into orbit. Uh, in this case, when we say orbit here, those are actually uh, electrons that stay within a certain distance of their nucleus. So uh, let us remove markers here again. <coughs> uh, all electrons here, they have potential and kinetic energy. Potential energy is referring to the energy that they have relative uh, to their nucleus. So the further away from their nucleus, they have a higher potential energy. In other words, they could have more energy available. And if energy, if electrons are moving more back and forth, let's say, um, because of uh, thermal energy, for example, they have higher kinetic energy because they're moving. So when we look at tightly bound electrons, they don't move that much and they're closer to the nucleus, so they have lower potential and kinetic energy. So that means <coughs> that valence electrons, which are in the outermost shell of the atom, have uh, lower energy than electrons that break free. So free electrons have higher energy. And this is where we start the energy band diagram. So here we have the conduction band, or the conduction band energy. And electrons that are in the conduction band here have higher uh, energy, because they can move and they're also further away from the nucleus. Valence electrons here have lower energy because they're tightly bound, they move less, and they're closer to the nucleus. So what we see here in the energy band diagram, uh, energy increases as we go up. So let us remove markers here again and introduce the next topic. So uh, valence electrons that are here in the uh, valence band, if they break away from the nucleus and become free, uh, they, uh, they attain conduction band level energy, so they go into the conduction band. But to break away from the valence band, they need to overcome a certain amount of energy, and that amount of energy is the band gap energy. So electrons that are down here in order for them to break away, become free, and go into the conduction band, they need to overcome this energy. Uh, now, let me note that if you have a little bit less than the band gap energy, then they won't uh, become free. So there are no electrons in the band gap. That's why we call it gap. It's a gap between the valence and conduction bands and electrons 
uh, never have this amount of energy because if they have this amount of if they were to have this amount of energy they wouldn't break away from uh, their orbits so okay let us talk about valence holes um, what do I mean by that so we said a valence electron that breaks away and becomes free then basically goes into conduction band but that electron that breaks away leaves behind a void and that void is what we call a valence hole or hole for short so something interesting here is that when we have a hole in the valence band uh, well we have uh, and let me put it down here let me remove markers and redo that if we have a hole in the valence band, well, we're going to have a neighbor electron right next to it. And it sits so close and it's the same energy that neighbor valence electron can easily go into the hole. But when it goes into the hole, it creates another hole on the side. So what happens is as electrons start moving in one direction, you see a creation of holes and the the creation of holes starts shifting in the opposite direction so what we have here is a mechanism of conduction and the drift of electrons going to the right is equal and opposite to the drift of holes going to the left so we also say that holes can also carry charge and what we're really saying is that neighbor electrons are carrying charge for us uh, through the movement as they move into their neighboring holes. So, uh, and just to summarize here, what we're saying is that free electrons in the conduction band can carry charge as much as free holes or uh, holes in the valence band. So holes are also charge carriers. So let us remove the markers here and go to the next topic uh, we have something that we call the Fermi level and that's the 50% probability energy or the energy with 50% probability of finding charge carriers what do I mean by that well let us consider a homogeneous material which we call intrinsic so an intrinsic material so it's basically a pure material when we have a pure material and we have an electron that uh, is liberated and goes into the conduction band, let's say by uh, thermal energy. So we have an electron in the conduction band and as it liberates, then it leaves behind a hole. So what we're saying here is that liberated electrons create holes. So the electron, the number of electrons in the conduction band is equal to the number of holes in the valence band. So it means that the electron density is equal to the hole density. That means that the probability of finding a charge carrier, since we have the same number of carriers in the conduction band as we have in the valence band, the energy level that represents the 50% probability of finding a charge carrier is halfway across the band gap, and that's why we have it here. The Fermi level is halfway across the band gap, and that's because this is a homogeneous intrinsic material, which means that every electron that is promoted to the conduction band leaves behind a hole in the valence band. So let me, let me uh, well, I can remove markers again. So we remove markers again here. We have a few kinds of solids. We have conductors, and conductors are very, are valence electrons that are very weakly bound so with very little energy perhaps even just thermal energy then we can uh, these electrons then become free and go into the conduction band so th the band gap is very easily surmountable in metals for example the conduction band and the valence band overlap so there's there is no band gap um, but when we we have a band gap that is very very low, they're very easy, easily surmountable, then we have materials that are conductors, good conductors. Then we have semiconductors, and semiconductors 
are materials whose valence electrons are moderately bound. So I'll say it this way. Their band gap energies are surmountable. It's not impossible, but we need to do some work to surmount this band gap energy and promote these electrons into the conduction band. And finally, we have insulators. And insulators are very tightly bound valence electrons. In practice, and what that means is basically the band gap energy is almost insurmountable. So there's almost no, no conduction. So what we have here is conductors that conduct very easily, insulators that hardly conduct, and semiconductors that can conduct. That's pretty much the difference between the three. Well, I hope this was useful and helpful. See you next time. Thanks.